What do I need to do to keep filament dry? If you'd have asked me that question six months ago, I probably would have told you that all you need is a dry box like this. I didn't have a filament dryer at that point and didn't think I needed one. However, in the interest of science and with the help of some coffee donations, I bought one of these. As some of you may know, I wasn't impressed with the Sun S1 as standard. It does dry stuff, but not very efficiently, so I turbocharged it. Check out the links at the end of the video if you want to see what I'm talking about. So what do I think now? Well, ever since modifying my Sun S1 to dry so well, I've been experimenting by weighing new rolls of filament as they come out of the box, and then seeing if I can reduce their weight by putting them in the turbocharged S1. If you haven't seen the effect that moisture can have on filament, then check out the video I did showing what happens when I soaked PLA for a week. I always assumed that 3D printer filament would come completely dry as all of the good brands come vacuum packed with silica gel sachets inside. What I've been finding though is that all new filament has been reducing in weight after being in the Sunlu Turbo overnight. Every single roll of filament except for the Iono Silk has come out of the Sunlu Turbo 2 to 4 grams lighter. To put this in context, I sat a roll of ABS next to my shower for a week and it gained 8 grams. So why is filament arriving with moisture already in it? Well, did you know that all of our filament is completely submerged in water as part of the manufacturing process? No? Well, neither did I until I looked into it. Water baths are used to cool the filament at the right rate to achieve the dimensional accuracy that we all demand from our filament. It's then wound directly onto the reels before being vacuum packed and sold to us. It's no wonder then that there's always some moisture in new filament. That's why now when I'm asked, what do I need to keep my filament dry? I'll say this. First, you need to make sure your filament is dry. Buy a filament dryer, use a food dehydrator, or even use your printer's heat bed like I did with my ghetto filament dryer. Whatever method you use, just dry it before you use it. Secondly, store it in an airtight container once it's dry. These can be vacuum bags, food containers, tote boxes with seals on, or anything else you can think of. Just make sure that the filament doesn't come into regular contact with moist air. Now obviously none of us are working in hermetically sealed environments and there'll always be times where the filament comes into contact with ambient air. Just make sure you minimise this time as much as you can. It also helps to have some kind of desiccant in with your filament so that any moisture that is in the air is soaked up by the desiccant and not the filament. In my dry box I use household dehumidifier packs which work really well but there are other options if you don't have room. So what about putting your filament on the standard spool holders that come with many of our 3D printers and leaving it exposed? Well, honestly, I wouldn't. The only way I'd actually do this is if I was going to put it back in a filament dryer again afterwards. Now this does all depend on how humid your environment is, and I'm sure you can use some common sense to decide what you need to do where you live. If you're enjoying this video, then hit like and think about subscribing. I make regular content to help with 3D printing and other projects. In my opinion, one of the essential tools for 3D printing is a hygrometer and a thermometer. You can pick these little devices up for very little money and they give you a good idea of your environment. I have many of them and use them to give me a good idea of the kind of environment my filament is in. All I would say is just be careful not to confuse the relative humidity that the devices display and absolute humidity. They're not the same thing and you have to do a calculation to get to absolute humidity. So what should we use instead of the standard spool holders? Well, I believe you need a dry box that also feeds out filament. This is not difficult to do, and the dry box that I designed does this. I have these sitting on top or next to my printers whenever they're running, and it keeps the filament nice and dry. So there you go. Dry your filament first, and then keep it dry. If you're watching this asking why you need to worry about wet filament, then click this video here. If you want to see any of the other videos I've mentioned in this one, then click here. Thanks for watching.